<laughs> it's shaken up the world of games and movies. Virtual reality offers a dive into all-encompassing cyberspace. But back in the real world, gamers are using the same tech for something a bit more serious. To see the hand there in front of me, but not be wearing a limb, was really surreal. It was really um, out of this world, if you like. <laughs> Kevin lost his arm in an industrial accident 35 years ago. Now he's helping develop a unique project. So you want to put the lid back on the part? A kind of try-before-you-buy scheme for artificial limbs. By contracting the muscles as I normally would do when I'm wearing the normal limb, I was opening and closing the hand and able to move items from one location to another. Those reflexes enable Kevin to make his electronic limb work. It's a vital decider in whether an amputee's suitable for an expensive prosthetic. But up until now, testing for those reflexes took time and wasn't as fun as VR. We're talking about a three-day course to actually go and learn how to use the, the opening and closing of the hand. And you would be, you, you would be moving shapes opening doors, making sure that you, you know, they're making sure that you're capable of using it. And then you're sent away to fend for yourself. So do you want to go for that uh, coke hand? That training is even harder if you've never had a limb. Imagine that for a congenital amputee, they may have never had an arm, so what are, what are those muscles? So like, it's very abstract at the moment. It's like, imagine grabbing a, an apple. It's, if you've never done it before, it's, I can imagine it's, it's very difficult to understand what to do. Mm -hmm. Ivan's tech could not only speed up the testing, but also train amputees to use the new limb. It's proving a hit with patients. Some patients have said, one in particular said that it's been very emotional to see a hand again, but he said in a good way. But he was like, um, and some of them just didn't want to go out, but they were like, can I just keep, can I, can I have this and just keep playing with it? Like. Some amputees aren't suitable for an electronic limb. Steve Hopwood's nerves were too badly damaged by his motorcycle accident, but he's helping an MOD-funded project to tackle one of the most distressing aspects of amputation. A very angry mass of angry pins and needles, like, like a swarm of bees buzzing around um, this, this elbow area. Phantom limb pain affects most amputees. It's cruel and it's debilitating. It takes over everything. You know, I, I couldn't watch telly, I couldn't talk to my family. Up until now, the treatments were pretty low-tech. So in the early days, they used basically a mirror, and mirroring the image of the intact limb in the position of the residual limb, of the missing limb. And just doing that, seeing the reflection or the mirror image um, in the position of your missing limb had an impact in reducing pain. VR and machinery can pull the same trick, only much, much better. The brain sends the motor command to the hand to open or close. The eyes are telling the brain, I can see it, the hand is opening and closing. Your special awareness is telling you this is how my arm is located in space. You can feel the weight properties of the object you just pick up. And we hope by doing this, the brain will embody the virtual limb and this will result in a reduction of pain. This project with Middlesex University could help thousands reconnect with a lost part of themselves. When I could actually move the hand and I was able to pick the objects up and put them down, I thought, oh, that's something that's, that I'm doing, which I haven't done for, for 30 years. Another 30 years and Steve's computerised arm could be animated on to his real world. Games like Pokemon Go are already blending the virtual with reality. It's tech that promises, quite literally, to change the way we see the world.